I'm Julie Turner, I'm the Trust Integrated Simulation Manager. Uh, my role is facilitating departmental speciality simulation, reenacting um, maybe clinical incidences, those rare, uncommon scenarios that scare us all, um, but that we want to revisit practice so that when we are faced with them in the clinical environment, it's not such a scary experience. Um, so doing it in the sim suite allows us to have a safe environment. Um, it's okay to mess up. Um, if the patient does die, uh, it's got a reset button on the mannequin, so we can just start him up again and, and go again. Um, there's no harm to our patients, so we're always doing the best for our patients by delivering safe care and developing our skills. As a um, simulation suite, we're very fortunate that we've got one of the best on the south coast. Um, we were very lucky that we've got a large space over at Chichester and our site here is, is nicely set up in the Worthing Health Education Centre. It's not just for one set of team members, we look at the nursing staff, the doctors, uh, medical students, physios, pharmacists. Um, if we're working together, surely we should be training together and that's what we use simulation for here, is to combine all our skills and all our knowledge that we work together to get the best for our patients. We started out just doing a bit of simulation for the F1s, which I think was where the deanery funding originally came from for the centre. And then from there, we've gone from F1s to F2s, to the CMTs, to the SPRs. We're now delivering sim pretty much in every speciality. We're delivering it to all sorts of different grades, sometimes as much as possible in multidisciplinary ways, and then sometimes in their own speciality, depending on what we're trying to, trying to um, offer and, and what to teach. And we're continually trying to develop what we're delivering with the, with the medical students and taking some of these themes all the way through from medical students through to the, the SPRs. We um, have separate scenarios uh, that we put trainees through and get them into the sim suite and conduct themselves in the way they would to um, assess a patient that's acutely unwell and to um, run through emergency drills and explore uh, things like human factors, communication and build on leadership skills as well. So one of the things that this um, introduces into training is an exposure into quite uh, high stress and, and high fidelity scenarios that you would otherwise not be able to see and practice managing unless you were in the real thing for the first time. So it's taking away that fright factor when you're uh, diving into the unfamiliar. So we're extremely lucky at Chichester. We've got two large uh, teaching areas. So we've got the Simpson Clinical Skills Room, which is where the high fidelity simulation takes place. So we have the simulation room, which is set up like a ward area, which live links through into a, a teaching area that seats about 20 people comfortably, with sort of tables and chairs. Um, we then have the Roger Miles Room, which is another large uh, teaching space, which you can fit about 35 people comfortably for lecture-based teaching. We have specific pods to practice clinical skills, so we have seven in total, which are all set up with the equipment available for that clinical skill. So the students have the ability to come up um, any time they like between core hours, which is Monday to Friday, nine till four, and practice the skills on their own or with my support or other faculty support. Um, the advantage for the students is they don't have to book if they have a clinic that's cancelled or you know some free time, they can just turn up and practice the skills independently using the array of kit that we have here. One of the advantages we have as a, a district hospital is that uh, the access to our clinical skills room uh, is freer, uh, albeit during core hours. We don't see as much usage, um, so the medical students are able to access it for a much longer period of time than they may be able to back in their, uh, their teaching hospitals. Uh, this means that particularly for the fifth years, they like being able to get in there for up to a couple of hours at a time uh, and utilise the training aids um, when they're coming up to their final exams and their OSCEs, which obviously is very good for them. The clinical skill session is usually a half day session, so three and a half hours, uh, and I try to tailor it to their requirements. So the idea is when they arrive, we introduce them to the room, the facilities, go through what we have to offer. Uh, we have a range of clinical skills mannequins and teaching aids, which are all accessible by the students. I find them really useful because as medical students, we won't necessarily be in those scenarios in real life for good reason. Um, because we haven't been trained yet for those acute scenarios. It's really good to have that practice and have that artificial pressure 
with the comfort that you know that you won't actually be hurting any patients or um, even if you get things wrong, it's, that's okay. It's all a learning experience. And if you need to, there are other people to help uh, on hand. We cover a huge array, array of clinical courses, um, internationally recognised ones through the Royal College of Surgeons, such as ATLS and Basic Surgical Skills, um, as well as other providers. Um, a full list is on our website. Um, always add into these courses. Um, we currently are running a Goodwood Cardiac CTA course, which is where we live link from the CT scanner, so real live cases um, being performed and then shown to a, a classroom of people here in the skill centre where they can follow what the radiographer and radiologist are doing live in real time. Once a month at the uh, anaesthetic department we hold an afternoon session where we uh, put anaesthetic doctors through their paces and uh, get them to practice uh, management of emergency situations um, and the idea behind that is to just get them uh, comfortable with the team that they'll be working with. We invite various disciplines to the afternoons including operating department practitioners, um, uh, theatre nurses, um, uh, surgeons and we kind of try and simulate with as much fidelity as possible uh, the theatre environment in which these scenarios would occur. And uh, the, the challenge I suppose is um, getting these teams to come together and being able to debrief them together in a way that's meaningful that allows a cross dialogue between different specialties so that when we have to encounter the real thing in real life um, we've uh, come across it before in a simulated scenario. So it's about uh, understanding roles and good followership as well as good leadership um, but also an exposure to processes and procedures you would otherwise not necessarily have to do. Um, so the actual technical aspects of preparing drugs in certain emergencies are very rarely done unless it's been practiced before. We even ran a session in our hyperbaric, our dive medicine chamber, because they noticed a big flaw in their chamber when somebody was very ill in the chamber. So we ran a simulation, they redeveloped the chamber and we showed with the simulation that their new system and their new airlock that they'd put in made it much safer for the patient and the team involved trying to help them. One of the things we've done recently is running scenarios where, for example, a drug error has been uh, carried out where something has been accidentally administered and uh, uh, the uh, patient becomes very unwell as a result of this. Now this isn't an obvious thing to detect when it happens and therefore kind of teaches the trainee that uh, the things to look out for should uh, something untoward turn up uh, in, in on the screens and on the monitors. So uh, the debriefing process is probably the most important bit and what we try and foster here, our ethos if you like, is uh, a completely non-threatening uh, can't make a mistake sort of learning environment where it's really just about uh, exploring issues as, uh, rather than assessing people and, uh, and, uh, and picking out mistakes. It's just a platform from which we can discuss how certain situations are managed and how you can uh, improve upon practices uh, for next time if you were to come across the real thing in, in, in theatres. <laughs> Our ongoing plan is very much to try and bring simulation into regular routine teaching rather than the old fashioned sort of PowerPoint and um, more didactic teaching to combine that with bedside clinical teaching as, as a new model. Um, but it's one that's easy for faculty to deliver um, because they just have to bring their own expertise, they don't have to sit down and prepare everything the day before. But it's one that the juniors really interact really well with because they appreciate having this expert advice on tap they can ask questions of and, and bounce back from a, from a hot acute clinical scenario so um, in our, well we're slightly biased being the sim faculty but in our, in our world that's very much the way we see education and things going forwards. Well simulation is a really kind of uh, exciting thing to get involved with as a trainee because it is where the future of medical nursing multidisciplinary allied health professional training is going um, you're seeing this across uh, the board with uh, physiotherapy training, nursing training, ODP, midwifery, they're all engaging with simulation because it's the most realistic and practical way of getting people thrown into uh, as close as possible a real life scenario uh, before they actually have to encounter it. I think the more high tech it becomes, the more interesting it becomes and the more challenging it becomes to engage with. Um, so it's been going on for 20 years but only really just accelerated in the last few years and become a lot more uh, standard as part of every hospital's kind of uh, you know, training program. It helps me feel a bit more confident myself in being able to manage these scenarios uh, once I do start working. 
not just being able to manage the acutely unwell patient, but also talking to other members of staff and being able to communicate effectively with them uh, under high pressure scenarios and being able to get my point across succinctly. We've got our web page, um, so you can find us on the Trust Intranet and also on the, the web page if you put in Chichester Medical Education Centre or Worthing Medical Education Centre. And you can find us on there, you'll find the person and the people to contact with the email address and you'll also see our online simulation calendar which shows all activity that's happening in both centres. <laughs>